In this video, we will look at some second order linear difference equations with constant coefficients. So I explained in the last video what is meant by a first order linear difference equation with constant coefficients. So here we just have a, um, a second order term. So the term with the highest order is a second order term, y sub n plus 2. Okay, so here we have a second order difference equation. Um, you can see that this term of the sequence is the sum of the previous terms in the sequence. Let's just write out some of the terms of this sequence, just to get a feel for what it is. y0 and y1 are both equal to 1. So here's y0, here's y1. Now how do we get y2? Well, we just add y0 onto y1. You see, if we let n equals 0 in our difference equation, we get y2 equals y1 plus y0. Just set n equal to 0. Okay, and so y2 is just the sum of these two terms. So it's 1 plus 1, which is 2. So the third term is 2. If we set n equal to 1 in our difference equation, we get y1 plus 2, which is y3, equals y of 1 plus 1, y2, plus y of 1. Well, that's uh, 2 plus 1, which is 3. So we can see the pattern. To get each term of this sequence, we just sum the two previous terms. So the next term is going to be 5. The next term is going to be 5 plus 3, which is 8. The next term is going to be 8 plus 5, which is 13, and so on. So this is the famous Fibonacci sequence. So like in the previous video, the first step is to multiply everything by z to the power of minus n, so we can bring in the definition of the z-transform. Next, we sum each term from n equals 0 to n equals infinity. Now, this term here is none other than the definition of the z-transform of the sequence y sub n. So, like before, we will call that y of big Y of z. Now here, we have the definition of the z-transform of the sequence y of sub n plus 1, which we saw in the previous video. Well, we can just look that up. It's z, y of z minus z, y sub 0. Now what's new here is that we need to take the z-transform of y sub n plus 2, and uh, I have that written down in this table. This is something that we derived in a previous video. Okay, the next step is to fill in for y sub 0 and y sub 1. They're both equal to 1. So we can just erase these. Next step is to bring all the terms involving y, sub z, y of z over to the left hand side. So we have z squared from this one. If we bring this term over, we get minus z. And if we bring plus y of z over, we get minus 1. And uh, now we need to shift over the terms not involving y of z. So minus z squared minus z have to be shifted over. Shifted over. Actually, these cancel out. Um, so we shift minus z squared over. Finally, we divide across by this thing here. Okay, so that's the z-transform of y sub n. We're, we are after y sub n, so we need to get the inverse z-transform of this thing. Um, now, we will factorize the denominator because we are going to use our table. And, uh, you know, our table involves quantities like this, so if we can get linear factors in the denominator, we may be able to use uh, the geometric sequence. I'm, I'm not sure yet, actually, or we can use the RAM sequence, things of that form. We'll see how it goes. Okay, well, you can't factorize this in the usual way. Um, you know, um, the terms are not constant terms. Actually. Well, they're not um, integer terms. So what we need to do is Look at the equation z squared minus z minus 1 equals 0. Solve this quadratic equation. And from the solutions, we can form the factors of z squared minus z minus 1. All right, so a is 1, b is minus 1, c is minus 1. So we have b squared minus 4ac in here. So that's going to give us 1 plus 4, which is 5. So here are our two roots. So um, we can write this as inverse z-transform of 
z squared over z minus one of, one of the roots. Now I'm going to call one of the roots a for convenience because I'd want to have to write down one, one plus root five over two and or one minus root five over two. Okay, so uh, just call one of them a. Doesn't matter which one, of course. And the other one is b. Okay, so there we go. So um, now the next thing that I will do is factorize one of the z's out of this, out of the top. And uh, break this fraction here into its partial fractions. So um, these are z to the 1 underneath, so that means we just have constants on top. So why did I break z squared into z times z? Well, um, you know, if we can find out what the constants a and b are, then we will have functions of the form z over z minus a, and of course we'll have a z over z minus b, and those functions are in our table. We can look them up. We can just pull the constants out and get the inverse transform of functions of the form z over z minus a. Okay, so it turns out that these two things will be constants, so that when we add these fractions together, we will get z over z minus a times z minus b. So we have to find these partial fractions. Now I'll just use the cover-up method quickly to do this. So to find out what this constant is, this capital A is, we cover up z minus a and replace z in what's left. So this is what's left with um, little a, sub in little a. Okay, because little a is what makes z minus a zero. A minus a is zero. So that's going to give us little a over little a minus b. Now let's look at this one here. Well, we cover up z minus b and sub z equals b into all of this. So that's going to give us little b over little b minus a. So now we can apply the linearity property of the inverse z transform. a over a minus b is just a constant. We can pull that out multiply it by z inverse of little z over little z minus a, do the same with b over b minus a, pull that out and get the inverse transform of z over z minus b. Now we, we know what these look like. Um, the inverse transform of a function of this form is the geometric sequence a to the power of n. Okay, so that's what we get for that term. And for this term here we have b over b minus a and uh, the constant here is b so we have to raise that to the power of n. Lastly, what we can do is factorize out 1 over a minus b. We have a times a to the n, giving a to the n plus 1. Um, we have b minus a here, which is minus bracket a minus b, so we need a minus sign here. Okay, so here we have the Fibonacci sequence, after we've plugged in, of course, for a and b, and I won't bother doing that.